morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Praise the Lord to my wife. Amen. Hallelujah, First Lady. And praise the Lord to all, everybody that have came out today. Amen. Say praise the Lord to you. Amen. 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 Thank y'all for coming out. Hallelujah. We'll go ahead and, and, and go into the word. Hallelujah. Let us go to Matthew uh, 15. Hallelujah. And this is we've been we've been in a series, and the series has been, Hallelujah. The series has been, Hallelujah. The uh, lip service in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Lip service in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And make sure I got the, got this thing right here. <laughs> Amen. Let us start. Matthew 15. Verse 1, it reads, Some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law now arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. They asked him, Why do your disciples disobey your age-old tradition, our age-old tradition? For they ignore our tradition of ceremony, what hand washing before they eat. Jesus replied, and why do you, by your tradition, violate the direct uh, commandments of God? For instance, God says, honor your father and your mother. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of the father or mother must be put to death. But you say, it is all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you. For I have a vow to give to God what I would have given to you. In this way, you say they don't need to honor their parents. And so you counsel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. You hypocrites, he says. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach uh, man-made ideals as commandments from God. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come here. Listen, he said, 
and try to understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Then the disciples came to him and asked, do you realize you offended the Pharisees by what you just said? Jesus replied, every plant not planted by my heavenly father will be uprooted. So ignore them. They are blind guides leading the blind. And if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into a ditch. Then Peter said to Jesus, explain to us the parable that says, people aren't defiled by what they eat. Don't you understand yet? Jesus asked, anything you eat passes through your stomach and then goes into the sewer. But the words you speak come from your heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. Eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you and we praise you on this day. We magnify you, God. We exalt you, God. Hallelujah. You are wonderful. Father, bless on today. Give clarity of thought, clarity of speech. Hallelujah. God, touch hearts that they may be drawn closer unto you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is lip services, then this is part seven. Hallelujah. On my mind. We're going to bring it to a close. Lip service, part seven. Hallelujah, in this series. Now, in the previous uh, 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 parts of the series, we covered uh, who Jesus was speaking with uh, in the first part, and, and that was the scribes and the Pharisees. And we talked about who the scribes were. You know, the scribes were people who, what they did as a job was to study the word of God and copy it and then hand that copy over to somebody else. So by nature of their job, they learned the word of God, but that didn't motivate them to actually want to follow the word of God. Hallelujah. Their motives of learning the word of God wasn't to draw close or nearer unto God. Now, we had the Pharisees also who Jesus was talking to. And we noted that the Pharisees were self-righteous uh, uh, people, uh, uh, self-righteous person. The, um, their belief in morality uh, uh, wasn't like everybody else's. They, 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 they believed more in themselves than anything else. Uh, one depiction uh, of it would say someone that is self-righteous like the Pharisees is you compare yourself with being right to your own standards of your own rightness. You have your own value and, and morality and scale system. So everything that you do fits into your right scale system. And in turn, that make everything you do right because you're judging your own self by your own righteousness. But we learn that Jesus has the only true value, morality, uh, or scale and system that we should be using. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. We learn that sometimes traditions of men causes you to, to uh, compromise the word of God, tradition. It causes you to try to please man and not God. Amen. We spoke about how a lot of times tradition turned into idol worship. Sometimes tradition we even called men to sin. We found that it's okay to have some tradition as long as those traditions didn't affect or violate the, the commandments of God. 
you know, we, we have a tradition here that we started 10, 15 every Sunday. That's just a tradition. We could change it to 11, 15. Amen. But it's just a tradition. The time that we start service has nothing to do with our salvation. It has nothing to do with what, you know, we're going, that's just what we agreed that we was going to do. That's right. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. We spoke about how you can't buy your way into heaven. And neither can you give your way into heaven by doing good deeds. or, or You can't even talk your way into heaven. It is good that you give your time, your money, and all that good stuff. Speak well of Jesus and his kingdom. But it's even better when you have these things in your heart yes, yes. and obey God, Amen. not just do lip service, Amen. not just talk about it, yeah. but actually do it. Ain't nothing worse than, than as they say, you, you know, you, 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 anybody know anybody like that? They've been telling you they're going to do something. Hallelujah. And then uh, to this day, they still hadn't done it. I'm sure we all can, <laughs> you, you, you know, Amen. it ain't nothing holding them up, but whatever it is in their heart. We found that Jesus is the only way back to heaven. Jesus said he is the way the truth and the life jesus said that hallelujah that you have to be born again of the water and of the spirit and this is done by acts 2 and 38 repenting of your sin being baptized in jesus name hallelujah and being filled with the holy ghost as we continue on through these uh, uh, different series Hallelujah. We learn about hypocrisy. Yeah. A person who claims or pretends to have certain beliefs about what is right, who behaves in a way that disagrees with their own beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A hypocrite. Yeah. Right. Hypocrisy. The pretense of being what one really is not, especially the, the, the pretense of being a better person than one really is. In other words, it's talking about a hypocrite, how, how hypocrites always put themselves above everybody else. We found that Jesus often called the Pharisees hypocrites because of the conflict between their external action and their inner attitude, hallelujah, in their heart. Jesus says that you should know them by the fruit they bring forth. Yeah, yeah. Lip service brings forth no fruit. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, because it's just empty words. Yeah. We learn that the light of God will expose your lip service and the filthiness of our heart. The light of Jesus shined through lip service and into our hearts where the truth lies or the truth of the matter is, is in your heart. Listen, for, uh, for us to be used by God effectively, we should allow God to come in and, and, and willingly submit to him for him to search us out so that our hearts hallelujah, would be clean and pure. Amen. Search out all them hidden motives yes, that we have yes, so that we'll be a vessel shining and waiting to be used and not just lip service. Amen. Listen, you, 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 can, you, you can change, hallelujah, you can't change someone's heart. Even Jesus, uh, with all his power, don't go and break down the walls and the doors of, of your heart and change it to how he wants you to love him. He don't do that. Even though he does have the power to do it, 
He doesn't make you love him. We learn that it's a choice. He wants you to choose him. Amen? Amen. He presents you with love and hopes that you would love him back. This is why he said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Thank you, Jesus. God has given Israel what they want, even though their heart is not right. He is hoping that one day Israel would make that change and repent for all their mistakes and say, Lord, I love you. And he's hoping the same thing for us Gentiles. Amen. Hallelujah. That, that one day we would repent from all our lip service and, yes. and yes. evil deeds and say, yes. Lord, I love you. Yes. God's goodness outweighs our lip service yes. and evil heart. He's just calling for us to repent. Lord, forgive us. No matter what we have done, his arms are open wide for us to come on back. Amen. Now we get to the uh, root of the problem, the heart. If the heart is not right, you're not going to be right. Hallelujah. If your heart is not right, you're not going to be right. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's read. Then Jesus called the crowd to him. Hallelujah. He called the crowd to him. Hallelujah. Let's skip that right there. We're going to go. Yes, Jesus called the crowd to him. Come here. Listen, he said. And try to understand. It's not what goes in the mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Now think about this thing. It's the words that come out of your mouth that defiles you. Yeah. Then Peter said to Jesus, explain to us the parable that says people aren't defiled by what they eat. Don't you understand yet? Jesus said to him, anything you eat passed through your stomach and goes into the sewer. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immoralities, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defiles you. Eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. What is it when someone speaks of being defiled? What kind of language is that? What, what is that? It's to be marred or, or, or something that's spoiled or, or to be desecrated or profane, to make unclean or impure. So in other words, if you're talking crazy like Jesus was saying, that's you. you making yourself unclean by the words that come out of your mouth. Yeah. Think about that. It says to corrupt the purity or perfection of. When Jesus saved you, filled you with the Holy Ghost and cleaned you up, hallelujah, you can be defiled again by what you speak out of your mouth. Think about it. It says to dishonor. Hallelujah, to dishonor. Jesus said, what comes out of a man's mouth is what defile him, not what goes in. Now, what go, What is it that goes in our mouth? Hallelujah, on a typical. Number one thing would be food, right? Yeah. Well, some of us <clears throat> would know that better than others. Yeah. <clears throat> you know? In the Old Testament, God said to eat this and don't eat that. But in the New Testament, he told them to go ahead and eat. If you turn to Acts 10 and 9, uh, uh, this right here, I want to read it. Because 
I want you to understand now. I want you to get it. Uh, Acts 10 and 9. We're going to read 9 through 15. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Now, what this, this setting is, is, is this is when Cornelius and his family was going to get saved. Uh, they was fasting and praying, and he was a good man, and, and the Lord told him to go find Peter and bring Peter and let Peter preach to them, him and their family. So this is where we add in this story. It's in, and he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. This is Peter. He up on the roof and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descended upon him as it had been a great sheet kent at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-hooded beasts of the earth, and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, so not so. Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. Hallelujah. Call the name of Jesus over any food that you're eating. It'll purify. It'll take care of you. You'll be all right. Whether you, uh, what, what is it? I guess, whether, uh, what, what people, I'm trying to think, I guess pork and like catfish, you know, people oh, yeah. are, have different uh, uh, onsets about not eating different things. But when you call the name of Jesus over your food, you're able, Jesus, he took away that type of stuff where, where you, you, you're you able to eat what you want to eat just in moderation, he said. You see, in the Old Testament, the Jews were the only people of God. But in the New Testament, God made a way through Jesus Christ that, that anyone can become one of the sons of God. If they only believed on the name of Jesus and obey the word. Amen. See, things change. Like I was saying, in the Old Testament, you can eat, you can eat this and that. But when Jesus came on the scene, things change. In the Old Testament, what nobody, the, the, the people of God, but the Jews. In the New Testament, thank you, Jesus, we have an opportunity to be the children of God. Things change. Hallelujah. What God considers clean, because we was considered dogs. If you wasn't a Jew, you was considered a dog. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God for Jesus, as they say. Thank God that Jesus came forth, gave his life so that we have an opportunity to connect in, hallelujah, with God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, it's kind of like this. The other thing that, that, you know, we talked about the food that goes in our mouth. Now we're talking about drink. You know, we, I, I, I guess I just go like to alcohol. It ain't, alcohol don't defile you because ain't nothing wrong with the alcohol because alcohol ain't nothing but whatever you make it out of, corn or, or grapes. It's your behavior after you have drunk that alcohol. It's, the, it's those, it's, it's that, it's, it's, it's how you act that, that alcohol make you make you act because people cook with alcohol and different stuff like that. It is it, it's it's 
It's your behavior. That's why he tell you, don't drink it, because it's like a spirit behind it. <laughs> That's why they name these liquor stores spirits. Because it changes you. It changed your behavior. People take a drink and they don't even act like themselves. <laughs> oh, anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, what happens is that alcohol, it goes in, and that's what Jesus was saying, things go in. It, it ain't defiling you. It, it ain't the alcohol going in that defiles you. It's how you act. After the alcohol get in there and, and that spirit get over into your heart. Amen. And you go to act now foolish. Word. That's what defiles you. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like you watching a TV show. Now, there's nothing wrong with the TV. The TV don't defile you. It's what you watch on the TV that'll defile you. Because you can watch some good things or you can watch some bad things. You can watch some things that are positive and, and uplifting and you can watch some defile things. Because you know what you're watching goes in to the heart and then it comes out. And those are the things that defile you. Let's, let's move on. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, all those things come out of you. He's talking about the food and the drinking and all that. But those things don't defile you. He said, what comes out your mouth, that's what defile you. Look at Matthew uh, uh, again, uh, 15. The, but the word you speak comes from the heart. That's what defiles you. The words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immoralities, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. It's the words you speak from your heart that defiles you. Yeah. Question, what's in your heart? What are you speaking? Look at Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful. I'm going to start. Ooh, I, I have to pause right there. It says that this is Jesus now. God talking. He says the heart is deceitful. It's deceitful. And then he goes on to say, above all things and desperately wicked. Not just wicked, but desperately wicked. That's why you see some people could do some stuff, boy. You see, the heart is desperately wicked, especially if you never heard of Jesus. If you if you have no control at all, man. It says it's desperately wicked. It says who can know it? So I got an answer to that question for you. Who can know it? Your heart. Jesus, of course. Jesus knows what's in your heart. In other words, Jesus knows the motives behind which you do things. See, this is where we're coming. We're bringing this together. This is what it's all about. See, we talk about lip service, but see, we have to get behind the lips and that service that's going on. That speaking, that where is it coming from? It's coming from the heart. Yeah, yeah. And then, see, we, we, we talk one thing, but then it's a different thing in our heart. Yeah. Now, hallelujah, behind the, the, the lip service is that thing that, that, that no one can see. Okay. 
And we all, we, we hide behind. See, that's what we do. We hide behind our lips. But God exposes the heart. He'll do it. And your actions will also. I might not be able to see your intentions behind your actions. Hallelujah. What you're speaking, but Jesus knows. This is how he responds to you. That's why, that's why you could be saying one thing, and but then you'll get a, a you know, you'll be asking Jesus for something, and you'll get a whole different response from Jesus. Because he looked past your lips, yeah. just speaking. And he looks at your heart, yeah. your yeah. motives, yeah. about what you're asking about, about what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 10 says, But I, the Lord, searches all hearts and examines. He says he examined secret motives. He said, I searched all heart and I examined your secret motives. In other words, he, he shines a light on it. And he examines your secret motives. Don't say you ain't got none. Because we all have had some secret motives now. You know how we be, you know, you... You, you, you want somebody to act like this right now, or you want to get something accomplished, you, you might say something, you know, you go in and tell this one. But your motive, you know, you say one thing, but your motive is another, because you want them to go and do something, or, or you tell somebody something because you want them to tell somebody else. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that, that, that is, that's a secret motive. But he says that that's not right. That's right. Amen. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He goes on to say, I give all people their due reward. Yeah. That's after he examines your secret motives. According to what their actions deserve. He gets straight down to the point, don't he? Hallelujah. And you're still, you know, we, we, we still sit back and, and wonder confusedly okay. yeah yeah that's my made up word okay. you all confused <laughs> confusedly why your prayers are not being answered uh -huh. because he's checking out your motives, your motives. Right. see you have to get your heart right yeah, you can Amen. pray for 99 days about something and you got a bad motive behind it Jesus, yeah. uh, Jesus ain't falling up behind that type Amen. of stuff Amen. you wasting your breath yeah. no. you wasting your time yeah. you being non-productive yeah. especially in the kingdom of God That's right. hallelujah yeah. listen thank you Jesus Good you may need to to do a self-examination on what's in your heart and your motives. Yeah. You know, you make them fool me as they say some of the time, but you can't fool Jesus none of the time. That's right. you, can't, you can't fool Jesus. Now, listen to this right here. <laughs> this is, uh, oh, this is Samuel. Hallelujah. And this is where uh, uh, this is where Samuel was um, talking to. He was going to anoint David. Okay, so this this, this is going to be kind of lengthy. I'm going to read it though because I'm gonna, uh, there's some good stuff in here. It starts at verse 16. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jess the Bethlehem. For I have uh, uh, provided me a king among his sons. 
And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. And call Jess to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethel, and hallelujah, and the elder town, uh, trembling as he come, and said, Comest thou in peace? And he said, peacefully, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me. This is the household of Jesse, you know, that David came out of. Jesse, yes. And come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified uh, Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eli and said, surely, the Lord's anointed is before him. In other words, this is one of the first sons, you know, because Jess had about, I don't know how many it was, it was he, he had about eight or seven or eight kids, uh, sons, and he had them all to pass through. And this was one of the first ones. And he looked on him uh, and said, oh, he's a good looking guy. He looked like a king. <laughs> and this, he says, surely this is the one. See, the point of the matter is, you, you, you just can't, hallelujah. God looks on the inside. Amen. See, we always looking on the outside of things. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We, 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 we look on the external yeah. Yeah. and make our judgment call. Yeah. And we need to stop that. Amen. Making judgment calls on the external. Let me read on. Hallelujah. I'm on verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Hallelujah. Or on the height of his stature. Because I have refused him. See? He was a good looking guy. As they say, he was, I guess he was tall and fine. And looked like a king. But our Lord God, he looked right on past all that, straight into his heart. This was the first son of Jesse that looked like he should be king. What I'm telling you is, God don't, he, he, he ain't messing with all that foolishness. He looked directly into the heart. You can dress up all you want. Yeah, what you say, uh, first lady? Look good, too. But your heart can be as filthy yeah. as, as, as they say, all oh, get out. <laughs> yeah. all right. And the Lord, he looks directly in there and sees that. And he dealt, you know, I read the scripture earlier, how he rewards to what he sees in your heart. Yeah. What's in there. That's why we need to get that thing right. Yeah. I'm going to read on. Yeah. It says, look not on his countenance or on the heights of the statue because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For the man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Yeah. That's right. Samuel, the man of God, was looking on the outward appearance. He couldn't see the heart. Hallelujah. I'm going to read on. Then Jess called uh, uh, Abinadad and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this one. And Jess, he called Shemiel to pass. And he said, neither has he chosen this one. And again, Jess uh, uh, made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And he said unto Jess, the Lord had not chosen not either one of them. And Samuel uh, uh, said unto Jesse, Are here all your children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngster. The youngster. And behold, 
he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for he will not sit down until he cometh here. And he sent and brought him. Now he was Rudy. I'm sorry. Yes, he was Rudy and withdrawal of a beauty countenance and goodly to look. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for he this for this is he. You see, even his dad had looked over him. Even his dad was like, I know better than that. Even his dad, he ain't even calling me in out of the field to, to pass from. Yeah. He, his, his dad didn't have enough confidence in his own son that he that that, that one would be king. Yeah, he didn't have confidence in his own son. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Sometimes we overlook even ourselves. Sometimes, just like, just like, just like uh, uh, Jesse was treating David, how he overlooked him because of his countenance, because of his small stature, you know, as though a, 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 a short man like me can't be king or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what happened, right? Yeah. That's what the word said. That's the word. It was like, like a short man like me couldn't be king. You know, but thank God. Hallelujah. It ain't up to me. Thank you, Jesus. Other words, what I was saying, though, we do that same thing sometimes. We do ourselves like that. We will overlook ourselves. When God is calling us, stop counting yourself out. Don't count yourself out, especially if you know what's in your heart. <laughs> especially if you got God in your heart. Don't count yourself out. If God call you, hallelujah, to do something, don't count yourself out. Whatever he called you to do, you will be able to perform it. Amen. Because he'll make provisions for you. Yes, he will. He'll give you strength, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Yes. Hallelujah. When, you, when it don't even exist in you. If he call you to do it, he'll, he'll make it happen yes, within you. All you got to do is surrender, yes, God. hallelujah, to his will. Yes. He'll provide. He'll provide. If, if he tell you to go to Alaska and do a mission, hallelujah, and, 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 and you, I don't know, not even working at all. If, he, if God says it, hallelujah. if you move out making plans to do it, he'll provide a way. God See, he don't operate like man. He'll provide for you. He'll make it happen. The last verse said, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramoth. In other words, hallelujah. You see, Man saw one thing, but God seen something totally different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You. You, that's why you got to be connected up with God. Yeah. Because, see, if you ain't connected with God, you can't see no further right there. That's right. <laughs> but if you connected with God, he got that x-ray vision yeah. to yeah. where yeah. he'll show you somebody's heart. Yeah. He'll show you their intentions. Yes. He'll do it. Yes. But, but see, you got to be connected with yes. him. You got to have that light that I was preaching about a couple weeks ago. Yes. That light that penetrates through the lip service and down into the heart. Yes. He'll do yes. it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. This is why so many times we miss our blessing and miracles. Hallelujah. You know why? Because we stand back and say to ourselves, I know God ain't using that one. I know God ain't finna use that little runt. Oh man, he don't even have on no shoes. 
I know God ain't using him. He don't look like no preacher. What we do? We do these things. Yeah, that's true. Amen. We do these things. You know, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here we go. Can't no white man bless me. Can't, can't no white man tell me nothing about Jesus. And then the other way around. Can't no black man tell me nothing about Jesus. What you talking about? Uh oh, hey, hey, here we go. Can't no woman preach to me. Tell me about no Jesus. But we do these, we'll miss our blessing. Yeah, sure because we looking at the external. Yeah, the we, we ain't looking into the heart. Mm -hmm. this, this woman got the heart of God. Jesus. And can tell you all things and can, and can bless your life. Jesus. But your ignorance mm -hmm. of, of can't no woman tell me nothing. Yes, My God. All of them women we up was talking in the Bible, telling them, yeah. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. hey, can't no child tell me anything. Mm -hmm. You know how we, we get older and, yeah. and, and we, you know, we, we're 75 and we don't want nobody 25 telling us nothing yeah. because we know it all by the time we get 75. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amen. Can't they tell me? But you can't just look. Because somebody 25 years old, they can be walking in the ooh, walking in God, blessing you. They can be like like Peter. Their shadow can be healing at 25. God it ain't got nothing to do with no age. It ain't got nothing to do with no sex. It's how your relationship is with God and who He chooses to use. But see, we have to come up out of you know, like Samuel and like 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 Jesse, we we have to come out of the external yeah, views of things and get with God, so we can see the internal, yeah. so we can get our blessings, yeah. deal with the heart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. First Corinthians uh, uh, four and five says, in the New Living Translation, so don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time. Uh oh. And that's, that, that is 1 Corinthians 4 and 5. He says, so don't make judgment about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns. Listen to that. It says, for he will bring our darkness, darkest secrets to light. And will reveal our private motives. Yeah. Then God will give to each one what praise is due unto them. We shouldn't always be judging people Amen. and throwing them away because of some mistake that they have done. Amen. Yes, God. We, listen, just because somebody has made a mistake, we can't judge them and toss them off to the yeah. side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, we're so quick to do that because we're looking at the outer behavior. Yes. We, we're looking at the, the, the outer behavior and we can't see the, the inner uh, a portion of the heart, mm -hmm. what God is looking at. I mean, look at Saul. Mm -hmm. Look at Saul, which was later called Paul. Yeah. He was a killer, yeah. a murderer. Now surely, woo, we would have kicked him. We would have tossed him out the church yeah. over to the door and everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but Jesus knew his heart, yeah. see? Thank you, Jesus. He had a heart for God. Mm -hmm. It was obvious because he was he thought he was doing the right thing, but his heart, yeah. his heart was misguided until he met Jesus yeah. on that day yeah. on the road to Damascus. Yeah. See, you, 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 you just can't be throwing people away. His motives from his heart was to please God. See, God's seen in him. He's seen his motive. Even though he was killing people, God seen, hallelujah, he looked past all of that and seen his real heart. And his real heart was trying to please God. 
But he, his pleasing God was misguided until he met Jesus. And there's a lot of people like that today. They are misguided. They think they have met Jesus, but they ain't really met him. Hallelujah. They ain't really met Jesus. The only thing that they, they just had with the, uh, an experience. They, they ain't really met him. They, they heard people talking about him. Oh, this who? Woo, we need to have a meeting. A meeting with Jesus. My, my, my. Look at David, an adulterous and murderer. But what God said, a man after his own heart. Yes. Now this man is, is, a, is a, an adulteress and a murderer. Hallelujah. Now, you know, if uh, David was a bishop in the church, we would have excommunicated him, tossed him out, never to be seen anymore. Yes, we would. <laughs> But God knows the mistakes and that, and that, hallelujah, he knows what you need to get right. That's why he sent uh, Nathan over to talk to him. He knows, because he knows his heart. His heart, see, <clears throat> I might get a little ahead of myself, but his heart, the, the abundance of it, what an adultery. Yeah. The abundance of it wasn't murder. The abundance of, of, of David's heart was Jesus. The abundance was a love for people, a love for God. Yeah. Now, yeah. when I when I speak about oh let, let me move on because I'm getting into what I get into a little later. Even even when well, we'll I want you to know that, that Jesus knows that there's something in all of our hearts, hallelujah, that defiles us. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes these things come out. <laughs> when I was working last night, this uh, EMT, uh, I was bagging this patient, uh, bagging meaning uh, they was on life. They had a tube down their mouth, and I was bagging air into them, keeping them alive. But they expired anyway. But the point of it is, he he says to me, "Oh, you you're bagging too fast." And uh, and you know it's a lot of stuff going on in the ER. And uh, I'm I'm like, you know what? I turned to him and just looked at him. I did not say a word. I didn't say a word. You know why? Because some of that undefiled thing in my heart probably would have came. Yeah, yeah. But what, what it was, I didn't say nothing. And you know, uh, I know to say on the subject, but sometimes silence speaks volumes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, uh, it, it was to the point of everybody coming to me after the after the case was over. And they was like, oh, what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> but anyway, I didn't say a thing to him. If, if, you know, I could have spoke some bad words to him, but that ain't what's in my heart. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what we're trying to get to. That's what I'm trying to uh, let you know right here, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Dad, listen, even if I would have said something in the era. Jesus won't throw you away. Because see, that's not the abundance of my heart. Now, some people may have the abundance of that in their heart. And then that's not good. That's when you need to clean it up. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 12 and 33. It says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. Then he said, oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, 
He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What is the abundance that's in your heart? Well, let me help you break that down. The abundance. What is it? Like I was telling you about David. Murder and, and messing around with Bathsheba wasn't the abundance in his heart. The abundance that was in his heart was the love for Jesus. What's the abundance in your heart? What is it that, that, that exceeds the other thing that's in your heart? Is it the love of God? Is it what Jesus said that was coming out of the hearts of the, uh, the, the scribes and the Pharisees? From the heart cometh evil thoughts, thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying and slander. These are what defile you. Evil thoughts, look, evil thoughts turn into evil action. Yeah, that's right. If you don't bring those things, those thoughts, into captivity. Amen. They'll turn into evil action. Yes. Thoughts of murder. Thoughts of adultery. Thoughts of sexual immorality. Thoughts of stealing. Thoughts of, uh, of telling a lie. Thoughts of slander. All these evil things starts from a thought. And that thought comes from your heart. And if you don't bind that thought up, all those things are turned into action yeah, yeah, that defileth you. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen? The Bible says in Proverbs 23, we're almost done, 23 and uh, 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 7, for as a man thinketh yeah. in his heart, so is he. Yeah. So is he. Yeah. As a man think, now your heart going to think. <laughs> as a man think in your heart, your heart got thoughts. Your heart think. Oh, my, 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 my. So a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What's in your heart? What is your heart thinking about? What is your heart thinking about? Is your heart thinking about one thing and your lips saying another? Are you, uh, are your heart, are you, are, are you, are your heart thinking about murdering somebody with your mouth by speaking negative about them? Is your heart thinking about, I don't know, having sex with someone else's husband or, or, or wife? That's what Jesus was saying. Are you, are your heart thinking about stealing or robbing God by not paying your tithes and your offerings? giving your offerings and, or, 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 or doing you know other things on your taxes or however you know I, I'm what is in your heart what your heart is thinking about what your thoughts are when somebody give you ten dollars too much <laughs> your heart say keep it knowing that young person at that register probably get fired that night your heart say, keep it. What is your heart thinking about? It don't belong to you. That's not yours. I'm just telling the truth. Hallelujah. It, it, that's rough. That's hard, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you that if you give that $10 back, man, God will just open up the door. You're talking about open up doors of heaven. Man, he'll bless you so much. Wow. Make that $10 look like nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm just telling you about your heart and about our heart. Yeah. Are your thoughts in your heart to lie? I don't know about where, about why. Uh, 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 what? Why you act the way you act? Is your thoughts coming, you know, you know how you you know, say if, uh, I don't know, say if uh, 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 you hate going to work, right? And so you don't want to go to work tomorrow. So you start thoughts, your heart, 
start conjuring up a lie. And then, what's so bad, you try to make that lie sound like the truth. Well, I think most people try to make their lie sound like the truth, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, but you know, you, you 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 try to put that lie to where to where it ain't it, it you know like it's the truth. You know how people tell half the truth. You know, say uh, uh uh like like a half the truth, but it's still a lie. Amen. You know, you be conjuring up. That's the it it starts there. Right there, that's true. It starts right there, Amen. and you 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 know you ain't. You you say if you were trying to stop drinking or something, and and you on the way home and you usually go by the bar, your your thoughts and your heart will start saying, "Hey man, why don't you slide on by there? You know it's a fellas day. You ain't seen. You ain't got to drink nothing. Just go on by." That's what happens though. Amen. It, it it starts doing that. These thoughts turn into action, yes. and certain behavior which defiles you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A couple more scriptures. 16 and 23. Proverbs 16 and 23. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth. Woo, you got that? That's what Proverbs says. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. In other words, before a wise person speaks, they consult with their heart. In other words, they just don't speak quickly. Yeah, slow to speak. They don't speak a wise person. They consult with their heart. They're like, no, I ain't gonna do that. I'm not gonna say that. Be wise and get that heart clean and purified. You know what? That's the root of things. Yeah. Look, the abundance of the heart is filled with whatever you let through your eye gates, your ear gates, all your spiritual gates. That's how the that's how the the abundance get added. That's how you get the abundance. So if you you know that's why it's so important that you control your environment. Yes. Whatever you surround yourself with, that becomes the abundance in your heart. If you surround yourself with people, uh, 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 say if I was hanging around a whole bunch of people that was cussing every day and every night, and tomorrow I get up on to get up and I stomp my toe on the bedpost, <laughs> probably the first thing that come out of my mouth is going to be a cuss word, because that's going to be the abundance yeah. in my heart. Now that's just a simple thing of an examination, but if I surround myself with somebody that's speaking positive and, and, and talking about Jesus, then when I stop my toe, it's probably gonna be Jesus. Oh, it's gonna be Jesus that comes out. Yeah. So it, it, it's your environment, how you surround yourself. Yeah. That's gonna be the abundance of your heart. Yeah. And that's what you're going to speak. Yeah. Cause it says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the mouth speaking. Out of the abundance. That don't mean that you won't have some crazy stuff in your heart because we all got some crazy stuff in our heart. And and, and, and listen, if you say no, you're lying. Right. That's the word. <laughs> and you, what happens though, every now and then that crazy stuff will come up. And and you have to look at it. Oh Lord, that's in there. Help, Lord. <laughs> Get this out of me. Get this out of me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me. See, that's what I'm talking about. And the more and more you do that, the larger and larger the abundance of Jesus will come in your heart. You can deal with things a lot better when you have the abundance of Jesus in your heart. Yes. When you go to speak to people, you can speak to even rude people yes, yes. in a kind way. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Because won't nothing else come out of you if the abundance of Jesus. is Jesus is yes. there. Amen. And you're going to speak like Jesus speaks. Yes. 
Oh, I'm preaching now, boy. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Stop positioning yourself to be filled with evil in your heart. Because evil will be what you become. Evil will be what you become. Hallelujah. Ain't that what he said? He comes he says, What a man thinketh in his heart. So is he. And if you put an evil in your heart, that's what you're thinking. And that's what you become. Think about that thing. See lot? Hallelujah. Everybody stand. The last thing I want to say is this. Uh, Acts 15 and 9 says, and put and put no difference between us and them, purifying their heart by faith. So what this is saying is that by faith, your heart can be cleansed. All those unrighteous things can be removed. Hallelujah. If you, if, if you, hallelujah, just ask Jesus to cleanse my heart, Lord. Like, you know, Psalms 51. What, what David told God, creating me a clean heart. Yes, Lord. Creating me. He made that thing personal. That's what all of us need to do. Creating me. If you're on uh, YouTube or, or Facebook or whatever media platform, hallelujah, and you need to have a clean heart, give us a call at 706, hallelujah, 257-3022. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we will pray with you. You can either come down to the church or we can pray with you over the phone. Hallelujah. Asking Jesus to clean your heart. And he'll do it, too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. With uplifted hands, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify you, God. Woo, God, clean us up, God. Hallelujah. Line our lips and our heart up, God. Hallelujah, that we speak and talk. Hallelujah, the same thing. And that thing being you, Jesus. That thing being your, your, your power, your might, your love. That's what we want to speak. That's what our abundance of our heart that we want, God. We want that to be our, our abundance, God. Hallelujah, God. Creating us a clean heart, God. Hallelujah. Creating us a clean heart. Mm, and let our lips speak the joy of you. Let our lips speak righteousness of you, God. Hallelujah. Let us magnify you with our lips, God. Hallelujah. No more lip service for us, God. Hallelujah. We're going to speak what's upright. We're going to speak upright, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. And we praise you, God. Cleanse our hearts. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.